Okay, everybody, my name is Robert Perry, and I'm going to be your instructor for this Political Science 102 Fall uh, 2022 class, um, American Institutions and History. Um, what I'm going to go over is some of the things that are going to be on the syllabus, the assignments, and so on, and then also go over kind of the format that we're going to we're going to be using in our Canvas shell. Um, so this is a four unit class. So, you know, uh, you can expect to have about 12 hours per uh, week outside of what we usually do. Uh, we're going to have lectures and readings and also work that you will have to complete. Um, I will be having office hours on Monday from 12 to 1.30. Once I get everything set up, I will create a link in canvas for you to contact me i'll be online during those times so you can contact me for any type of needs that you have uh please don't be embarrassed please don't be shy please just come and talk to me if you have any issues or if you need any any type of guidance and i should be able to provide that to you um here are the texts that we are using um our main textbook is going to be The Irony of Democracy, an Uncommon Introduction to American Politics. You have the ISBN uh, number there. You can either get this from the bookstore or you can look for electronic copies on Amazon or even the Cengage website. Cengage is the publisher. Uh, we also have a history book, and that is 20th, 20th, century, his, uh, 20th century America, a Brief his, History. And this is an ebook in our library. So I have posted the link in Canvas. I'll show you in a in a few minutes how to get there. But just remember, that's another book that we're going to be using and referring to throughout the class. Uh, we have an optional textbook um, that talks about California. Um, you know, to kind of cut costs, I'm for you all. I made this optional. Um, I'll bring out a lot of material from that text into the lecture. So if money is a, a hindrance right now uh, don't worry that book while it will help i'll also definitely bring in information that the book will provide so you know maybe we can cut some costs there and, and make things a little bit more affordable for you all okay so uh what we're going to be doing during the semester is we're going to talk about these specifically three learning outcomes that we're gonna gonna try to accomplish so we're going to identify, compare, contrast the various positions on the ideological spectrum and apply the core values and beliefs of each position to contemporary political issues. So we're going to go over what ideologies are, what the political spectrum is, and values that each of these ideologies hold. So that's going to be something that we'll accomplish by the end of the semester. We're also going to talk about the system of checks and balances in U.S. government and how it affects elections. I mean, sorry, how it affects legislation. Um, Thirdly, we're going to talk about the different instruments of U.S. foreign policy. We're going to get a, give examples of their use. We're going to explain their role of different institutions in crafting foreign policy, whether it be the legislative branch or the executive branch. And then we're going to look at a particular policy and see what uh, you know its strengths and what its weaknesses are. So those are the three primary student learning outcomes we're going to be focusing on. Miracles Assess also has some core competency that we're going to be using in order to enhance our education and enhance our learning skills. Each student learning outcome here is tied to a core competency. We're primarily going to use critical thinking and written communication skills. Once you all advance into the upper division, your writing is going to be really critical. So we're going to help, I'm going to help you try to develop, uh, you know, good habits uh, as far as, you know, citations, you know, looking at both sides, critically thinking and kind of thinking out of the box about issues. Uh, and that's something that I really like to focus on. Here are our objectives. So we have all these varieties of these objectives here. We're going to talk about the Constitution. We're going to talk about slavery. We're going to talk about the development of California from the Spanish period to the Mexican period to the American period. We're going to talk about different types of government. Um, federal governments, uh, confederate governments, unitary forms of governments, and we're going to look at federalism. Uh, we're going to talk about policies here in California, education, water, uh, criminal justice, um, kind of going into what we just talked about with federalism. We're going to look at state government, county government, city government, like 
you know, the city of Oceanside or the city of Vista or the city of Chula Vista where I live. And then we're going to focus on special district groups, things like school boards or community college boards, uh, water boards, public utilities commission. We'll talk about those. Uh, we're going to talk about political parties. That's going to be a really fun uh, activity. And we'll go through and look at different political parties that have kind of evolved into what we have today with the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Uh, we're going to talk about public opinion polling and how that is effective. We're going to specifically look at uh, pollings uh, that are done daily with regards to uh, likability or favorability of the president. Um we're going to talk about the electoral machinery that we have here and how ethnic groups, socioeconomic groups, uh, gender vote in some of the positions they take on different issues. Uh, we're going to look at the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch, talk about their development and how they relate now, especially to the diversity that we have here in our country. We're going to look at civil liberties and civil rights. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is one of my favorite parts of the section. We're going to look at Supreme Court cases that kind of shape how our civil liberties are, are given to us and how are they protected. Um, you know, we'll look at the Constitution and, and look at the Bill of Rights and see how those things are put into place to protect us from the government. But it's kind of our country's evolved things like, you know, same sex marriage, abortion rights, a uh, bunch of different issues that didn't exist in 1781, 1791. Um, and but they exist now and how we have certain rights and certain privileges that are granted to us by the courts and in the Constitution. We're going to talk about ethnic groups, minority groups, and we'll look at gender groups and socioeconomic groups and how they tie into the electorate. Uh, we're going to talk about the bureaucracy. So security is a bureaucracy. The DMV is a bureaucracy. So we'll focus on that as well as talking about the economy and how we have industrialization here and some of the consequences that have come out of that, especially with the with the kind of the the, the fact that a lot of jobs have moved out of the United States that, you know, we're considered blue collar jobs and what that has done to our country. Uh, we're going to talk about fiscal and monetary monetary policy. And then finally, we're also going to look at things like Social Security, Medicare, welfare, and how the government steps in to help people and um, how people may have different views on giving help to each other. So what I want you to do in this course is definitely, definitely keep an open mind and definitely be able to look at both sides of the issue. What I want to have you all take out of this class is that we have to focus on there's going to be two sides to every issue, and we're going to have to analyze the question of why. That's primarily what I want to get you to get out of this. We're not going to talk about who's right. We're not going to talk about who's wrong. We're going to talk about why people don't vote. Why do, why does uh, former President Trump have a profound effect on a certain segment of the population? Um, why do women still fight, have to fight for fair pay? So we'll look at all those issues and, and answer the question of why. Okay, so just a little bit more. I have goals for this class. Please read through this. All of our courses uh, work is going to be done, done on Canvas. Remember, this course is going to be asynchronous. So there's going to be no meetings. I will post lectures. Um, I have completed currently lectures probably up through week six. And I'm going to wait to do a lot of these lectures uh, as we get closer to them so we can bring in real world examples to help us understand um, but I do want you to be able to look in the future to see what we're talking about. But we're probably going to be releasing modules quarterly. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute, meaning that we have sections or units that um, our modules, our, our learning modules are, are separated in. And I think I'm going to only open the weeks that we're focusing on in those units. Um, I really don't want people working too far ahead because there might be something that happens in the course of of you know our political world and I want you to be able to kind of have me go along with you and explain things where I can bring in real world examples to really you know um lock down what we're trying to understand um internet access and harassment if there's any type of problems that I see in the discussion boards or any type of negative uh, 
interactions, I will speak to you. Um, if there is a point that I think I need to get the college involved, I definitely will. Um, here is the attendance policy. Uh, remember, there's no set meetings for this class, but I will expect you to sign in uh, to the class at least uh, three to four times a week just to get uh, on top of the work that we're having. If you have not logged in within two weeks, I'm going to contact you. If you don't answer me or if you don't um, catch up on work, um, you will be dropped. But I will definitely let you know. Um, legally, I have to drop or I have to drop students that are no longer participating. OK, let's go down a little bit. Uh, make sure you know the withdrawal policy. I have the withdrawal date um, posted in the syllabus here. Uh, remember, if you do not withdraw out of this class before the 75 percent point, um, then you will be receiving a grade. And I do not like to give low grades. Um, I don't consider myself easy, but if you work hard and if you really give a lot of effort, you'll do well in this class. And if there's something that you don't understand, definitely, definitely let me know. So familiarize, familiarize yourself with these policies. Like I said, my office hours, I will hold office hours via Zoom and I will let you know that link as soon as I get everything set up. Uh, just a little bit of, of etiquette here. Um, another thing that we're going to go over is some of the things that we're going to be doing. Um, our first assignment is going to be a Jacapa soft skills assignment. I will provide you the link. Um, soft skills are, some, are something that employers are looking for. And I want you to be able to be cognizant of them, even though it's kind of hard to tie it into political science. We're going to do an activity. Uh, where I'll give you the link and you'll answer a survey. And then I'm going to want you to analyze how you feel you did on that. We're also going to have three short essays that tie into our student learning outcomes. We're going to have weekly Canvas discussions. And then we're going to have five exams. And we're generally going to have five units in this class uh, where we have sections cut out. And each exam will be worth 50 points, 50 questions. Uh, don't worry, I will have a study guide for you, and I'll also do a study video uh, before the test so it can help you do well. Um, like I said, if you give an effort, I will really work with you to try to get you to pass this class. Just give me an effort. Um, there's also going to be a Supreme Court research project. We'll go over that in a few minutes. Um, there's going to be sections to it. I'm going to ask you to choose a case by mid-September. Uh, then I'm going to ask you probably in late October, early November to give me a description of the constitutional question of this case. And then the final project will be due in uh, December. And that will be either a paper or a video. And we'll go over that in a minute. Um, also, there's going to be weekly homework exams. So make sure that you take advantage of these. These weekly exams may have questions. Wink, wink may have questions that might appear on the exams. So make sure you take these quizzes. They're easy points. You have multiple attempts to do it. And it is a good way to get you ready for the exam. So make sure you do not take those for granted. Here is our grading scale, traditional grading scale. Uh, I want you to keep up on current events. There's a lot of things that are happening now, right? So make sure you look at different types of websites, different types of publications that help you um, uh, be educated about what's going on in the world. And I put some of them out there. Um, one of the problems is a lot of these things have started to go behind paywalls. I don't expect you to pay for anything. Uh, just, you know, if something is happening or if I mention a current event, just Google it and look at the free sites. I don't expect you to open up a Washington Post uh, subscription because a lot of their news has gone through the pay uh, behind a paywall, as well as the New York Times and Wall Street Journal and so on. Um, I'm going to give you guys feedback on written assignments. So look at your feedback that I give you in Canvas. And if there's any questions, definitely, definitely let me know. Please look at my feedback. Um, I try to give you feedback by different ways. Um, the discussion questions that we have weekly uh, up here, these uh, weekly discussions, um, if there's something that goes off the rails, I'll generally get involved. But for the most part, I do not post into the discussions because I want you to be able to interact 
with each other. But if I see something that I don't think is is cool and and there's some, I don't want to say harassment or there's some type of 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 um heat or beef going on, I'll definitely get involved. So I want you to be able to speak freely and be able to express your opinion while accepting other opinions. Okay, so we're gonna have three short essays. Um, depending on the question, you'll need to craft, craft the response that correctly answers the question. I will post the question in Canvas. These are three separate assignments and they're gonna be done throughout uh, the course of our um, semester here. Um, our first soft skill assignment is gonna be due on August 31st. I will give you a link where you can go in and analyze your soft skills. Then you're gonna want, wanna write a one to two page paper telling me what you found out about your skills. Is it what you expected? Uh, what skills do you need to work on? And is there anything to surprise that surprises you? I have the the, the whole thing arranged in Cabis. And um, the week before the assignment's done, I'll give you a reminder and a code to be able to go in and take the assessment and kind of reflect on it. Um, I have the exams that are broken out. One weeks, one to three, four to seven, seven to nine, 10 to 12. 13 to 16. So remember, each of these uh, exams are going to be 50 points, 50 questions, and they're going to be relative of the material that we are focusing on. Um, there is going to be a couple of questions, a few questions that have to do with separation of powers and have to do with ideologies. I'm going to ask them at the beginning of the semester, and then I'm going to also ask them on the final. So just make sure you're aware of that, and I'll definitely let you know about that also when we go closer and closer to the exams. Here's the Supreme Court Research Project. It's a 50-point uh, project, and it's going to be due on uh, December 10th. Going to want you all to pick a Supreme Court case and analyze it. And remember, it has to be a Supreme Court case. The reason I said that is a few semesters ago, I had a, a student do a paper on the O.J. Simpson case. Well, that case was really interesting, and you know I'm a child of the '90s, and I lived through that. So uh, it's not a Supreme Court case. So it's something that we have to be mindful of when you go through and choosing a case. I'm going to want you guys to give a history of the case, the constitutional question. Anytime there's a Supreme Court case, there's going to be a constitutional question involved. The decision, a description of the majority opinion, a description of the dissenting opinion, and a description of the concurring opinion. Um, here are some examples of cases that I have, uh, Gideon versus Wainwright, uh, Miranda versus Arizona. Um, some of them might be seem familiar to you. And I put the what the question is involved or what the issue involved, Texas versus Johnson flag burning. Um, I also added this semester some gun rights ideas that people have used and Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, the case that overturned Roe versus Wade, that has sparked a lot of feelings along both sides of the issue. So you can analyze that case as well. There's gonna be a couple of ways that you can do your, your project. One is a five page paper minimum, five to seven pages, not including your works cited, your abstract or your cover page. Um, give the, answering those questions that I had at the, at the top of this page here. So you'll need to answer these questions in essay format. With citations, remember, please use citations. I will ding you on your grade if you do not use proper citations. I have here that I take APA formatting, but if you want to use MLA or footnotes or some other uh, style that you're comfortable with, that's fine with me as well. Another option is you can do a five to 10 minute video presentation about your case. Um, you, can, you have to use some type of visual aid, with a PowerPoint, a skit, or screenshots, and I'm going to want you to do a voiceover with it as well, all right? So tell me in verbal details about your case, kind of focusing on those same uh, points that I had at the top of the page. And on top of that, I'm going to ask you to cite as well, so make sure you cite within your PowerPoint or your Google slide or whatever thing you use. Now, here is some writing assistance links that I put up. I also have links that can help you uh, find cases. Oyez is a very, very good resource to look up Supreme Court cases, and it has some very good uh, 
uh, material that can help you understand what the case is about. Uh, the Supreme Court blog is another one. Uh, the Supreme Court does not record video of their proceedings, but they do record audio. And sometimes you can find audio of Supreme Court arguments um, on that website. And also there is uh, some dates that I have put in a place where I want you to be able to work on this case throughout um, the course of the semester. Give me your uh, case by uh, September 24th, and that'll be worth five points. Um, you're not locked into it. If you want to change the case later, you can always do that. But I do want you at least to make a preliminary choice by September 24th. Uh, then you're going to need to tell me the constitutional question by November 5th. And then the final project will be due December 10th, and that'll be worth 40. And if we put everything together, it's going to be worth 50 points. Here's a little bit about Canvas discussions. I want you to go in and participate in the Canvas discussions. You can learn a lot of stuff from that. A lot of it is going to deal with critical thinking. A lot of it is going to deal with you looking at an issue. I also want you to respond to two classmates. So what will happen is you will you have a due date that you will need to craft your, your original response. And then I'll give you like a day grace period to look at your fellow classmates response. And you'll need to respond to two classmates to receive the four full four points for the week. And just there's a little bit of details in that. I talked about the homework weekly quizzes, you have multiple attempts, and you can also keep the answers after you complete the attempts. Here's our calendar, and as you can see, I have our readings broken up. I have our due dates on here and the subjects that we're going to be talking about. So that pretty much deals with the syllabus. So this is just examples of what we're going to be talking about throughout the course of the semester. Here's our makeup policy. Make sure you familiarize yourself with that. Uh, student Excel, uh, accessibility services. If you have any type of accommodation that needs to be uh, made, please send it to me and I can set up Canvas for that. Um, I'm trying to make this course accessible. If you notice anything that's not working properly, definitely let me know and I can get that fixed. Please use our library. Uh, we have the Writing Center. We have a code of conduct here and uh, resources that are available for anybody at uh, Miracosta. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I want to show you the Canvas shell. So let me get that up. So this is our Canvas shell. Um, I'm still working a little bit on the class, so it'll little, look a little bit more complete. But for the most part, um, this is what I got. Uh, I have a bio video about myself here. Um, yeah, that's me boxing. I don't box for competitively. I just box for uh, for exercise, and cause I would never want to box competitively because I do not want to get hit in the face. A uh, picture that I have of the capital that I took and some more resources. What I'm going to want you all to do is weekly, I'll send out announcements probably two or three times a week. Um, there's always going to be an announcement at the beginning of the week of things that we're going to be focusing on and things that are going to be due. And I'll also drop stories and links to you and reminders in the announcement section. So make sure you're aware of this and you know check it regularly. Okay, I'm going to want you all to navigate to the module section, right? And remember, I have a little bit different access to you. So let me go to student view so it'll look better and you'll see what you, you all will see. Um, right here is the link for the 20th century textbook. So make sure you go in, use your library credentials and get hooked up with that book. Um, course management, here's my uh, contact information. I set up a discussion link that if you ever have a question go ahead and ask it there or you can obviously email me so use that link um institutional support of the library tutoring we have tutoring uh for this course so definitely if you need help let them know counseling uh canvas support i have a sample research project 
for the Supreme Court. So you could take a look at it. And there's a link to the writing center. So each of my modules here are divided up into weeks, right? So, you know, a, August 22nd, 2022, uh, August 22nd, 2022 is our first day and that's the first day of the week. So um, here's what we're going to be talking about. Look at the readings, look at our learning objectives. We have our PowerPoint slides. We also have Google slides. I made Google slides for, uh, for those of the, us that use Google and don't use the PowerPoint. Um, I have an exam study guide. So you wanna print that out and look at it. Uh, our lecture videos, please watch these. Uh, these are gonna go over what we're talking about for that week. And then there'll be various videos that I'm gonna want you to, to watch. Uh, here's what's due the first week. We have a non-graded mandatory assignment that is due by August 24th. If you do not sign in and do not answer the question by August 24th, I'm going to contact you. And if you do not want to continue in this class or if you ignore uh, my email, I will be dropping your enrollment. All right. Um, our first discussion and our first homework assignment. And you can see that's how I pretty much have each week set up. Right. So I have PowerPoints. Um, and then I have weekly lectures, and then I have the due dates of the assignments. So I really, really tried to format this to be a kind of a user-friendly type uh, Canvas shell. If there's any issues or if there's any problems, let me know, and I can definitely, definitely help you out. Please, please, please come to my office hours if you need to. Don't be shy. Please ask me any questions that you may have. I want you all to succeed in this class and we can all succeed in this class if we put in the work, work hard and complete our duties and our assignments. Okay, everybody, that's all I have for this. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. Thank you.